Again, thanks for the great feedback. It's a pleasure hearing from the alumni. Um, before we even start, I'd like to give you a little, a little idea from the Parsha. We all know when it comes down to the one of the great suspenses of the, the Parshas, at the end of Parshas Miketz, after Binyamin is brought down to Mitzrayim and he's facing Yosef, and Yosef is overwhelmed with emotion. But after he composes himself, he secretly puts the gvia, he puts the cup into the bags of Binyamin to trap him. And finally, right, Yosef and his servants, they go chase after the Shvatim, and they capture the Shvatim. And they find the gvia in Binyamin's belongings, and they bring them all back, and the brothers don't know what they're going to do. There's a Chazal that says that the Shvatim went to Binyamin and said, you're a Ganef, the son of a Ganef. You're a Ganef because you stole the Gvia, a son of a Ganef, son of Rachel, who stole the Trophim. Which needs a beer on its own right. Maybe in a few weeks, you'll hear a phenomenal shot from one of the incredible Ravim in the Yeshiva. But my kasha was from our Parsha. Rachel took the Trophim. We all know Rachel took the Trophim. Yaakov didn't know. It's obvious Yaakov didn't know that Rachel took the Trophim because he never would have cursed her. Right? And Lovin didn't know. <coughs> Lovin didn't know he took the Trophim because he searched. And Rachel sat on the Trophim. Again, this is the Trophim that she took. And Mepharshim says she took the Trophim L'Shem Shemayim so her father would see that there's nothing for Avodah Zarah. And many shot him in the Trophim. But one thing I'm trying to hear to point out is that Lachara, no one knew. And the Torah seems to be silent of what happened afterwards. Lovin gets upset. Yaakov gets upset. Tragedy with Rachel. So how did the Shvatim know? I just had a ha'ara, something that you'll see that it's obvious. But it's Yesod, as alumni in Baruch Hashem raising wonderful families, is that you could fool the Rebbeim sometimes, you could fool a husband, you could fool a parent. You can never fool your kids. It's impossible. The kids know exactly what the parents are up to. The kids know if there's a TV in the closet. The kids know what's on the phone. The kids know what Hechsher are coming in. The kids are knowing what's going on in all different stuff different places. It's a big yesod. It's a big yesod. Our biggest mashkichim. Be careful, right? Because our kids see everything and they learn from our example. So, Hashem, we should live to be that example. Just an idea. Back to our Parsha. Back to Parsha. And one of the things that's incredible, talking about Rachel Imenu and her incredible tzitkas, the Gemara in Megillah, and that Yod Gimel Mabez says that the schus of Rachel Imenu's tzniyas, schus of her tzniyas, she was okay to have a shawl. And this beautiful sefer of Rebelli Baruch Finkel, one of the Magidi Shem in the Mir, Sekharn of Racha, as Kasha, Tznias. It's the Zuchus of her Tznias that she gave the Semanim to her sister Leah. It's not the Tznias that she gave the, that her sister, it's the Batronas. She was Mavater. She gave up the Zuchus of the Har marrying Yaakov. And she gave it to Leah. But why do you call it Tznias? How is it called Tznias? And Rabbi Elia Baruch brings a beautiful pshat of the Magad of Yerushalayim, Rav Shalom Shadron. And he says, from the Das Ekenim in Balayatosis. The Das Ekenim right here, <clears throat> in the beginning of the parasha, says, you know what the Simanim were? The Simanim were, it says the Das Ekenim, there was Chala, Nida, and Hadlokas Nair. And therefore, it wasn't really Simanim that she had to do the sign language. It wasn't the signal. It was the simanim, or a whole different thing. This is what you have to do. Rachel Tolay, this is what you have to do to act, right? If you're going to marry a tzaddik. It comes out, it says the Rishon an incredible thing. It comes out that Leah never even knew that she was being switched. Leah never even knew that Rachel was supposed to get married. Again, there's different midrashim, and he says it right away. But according to this, it comes out incredible pshat. That's what Tznias is. The Tznias is, she didn't need fanfare. She didn't need a Yashikach. She needed Hatznei Alecha Simelekecha. She needed, I'm doing the right thing. And no one has to know. And therefore, it's magnified for Dari Darus. It's the Chus of Rachel Imenu. It's the Chus of her Viter. HaKadosh Baruch was Mavater on us. And the Chus that we're back in Eretz Yisrael. The Chus that we're still around. It's the Chus of what Rachel, without any fanfare, she's omid for us. And that's Chus of what Rachel tried. And her whole life, 
to be Moshe Nefesh for Klai Yisrael, whether it's for Leah or whether it's for trying to save her father. That should be in on ourselves that we should also have that koch of Tznias in our own lives. And it's one thing that our kids will pick up on. And we'll have doors of continuing in the ways of Yaakov Avinu. Thank you.